today I'm going to show you how to integrate Flowdesk into Elementor Forms. Now, what I'm going to show you is the easiest way to have a seamless connection between the two so that you're not having to mess around with colors and backgrounds or modifying code over in Flowdesk to make it look nice over in Elementor. This is going to be the easiest way to do that. Um, I've got Elementor, a form that I've created right here in front of me. This is one of my um, designs from Legend Landing Pages. Um, I'll put the link to my shop in the description below. Um, and then what you've got to do is also make sure that you have two things. Um, one, you need to have a webhooks integration on your Zapier account, which means you need to have um, some sort of paid account in order to have that. And then you also need the Flowdesk one. So as long as you have those, you're good to go. So don't worry about this. There's no pre-built integrations. We're going to make this from scratch and it's going to be super easy. It's going to take us mere minutes. Um, you can get this even just on the lowest plan of Zapier. And then you can get the link to the Flowdesk Zap integration because it's in beta directly from uh, the support desk over at Flowdesk. So once you have that, you're all set to go and that's all you need. Okay, so typically when we have a form in Elementor, it defaults to um, a specific action after we submit the form and that's typically email. What we're going to do is we're going to change that and we're going to say webhook. This is going to be super easy. Okay, so I've already got this embedded in here. I'm just going to take it out real quick. What we're going to do is we're going to just make a zap. Okay, so we're going to start with webhooks. And then we're just going to say catch hook and hit continue. Okay, go ahead and copy this custom webhook URL and we're going to go back over here into the Elementor page and we're going to pop it in. And then we're going to hit update or publish. And the reason why we're going to do that is we're going to give it some data to test out. Okay, so I'm just going to refresh this page, make sure that I've got fresh content coming in. We're going to hit continue down here. All right, so now we have to test our trigger. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to give it some data. I'm going to type my, type my name and email address in there. Send away. Form sent successfully. Okay. Test the trigger. Successful. If you see a bunch of gibberish down here, it's all good. Okay. So it gives us the data that we typed into the form. Okay. So we're going to hit continue. And then we're going to type in Flowdesk, because that's where we want the data to go. And we're going to say create or update subscriber. Hit continue. And then you have to select the account. Okay, segment. I'm going to put business. I might need to load some more just to get it to pop up. There we go. This is just a test account that I use. Okay, so email. We need it to grab the email. Alright, so you're going to want to say show all options. And then you see this down here. You want the actual data that's entered. So fields, email, value. Okay. First name. So all options, value, and I didn't have a last name insert on my form, so I'm good, I'm good there. We're going to hit continue, test and continue. 
perfect. So Zapier has successfully sent that data over to Flowdesk. So now I can turn this on. And I know that's working. So I can go back to my form. And then I can publish it and do whatever I need to do. It. Or I can advertise it or, you know, make it live. Um, so that's the easiest way to work with Flowdesk to Elementor. Um, there's a lot of other tutorials out there that involve a lot of like color manipulation and backgrounds and other stuff. If you just stick with this, um, you know, have like a premium setting on, on Zapier, um, this is going to make things a lot easier and it's going to save you a lot of time. So I think this took like mere minutes. Fussing with colors and backgrounds um, within the actual subscription for Flowdesk itself is going to take a lot more time than just using a zap. Um, so you could always just use custom HTML forms, um, but I know that it's a lot easier to do it this way, just from a time perspective. So now that you know how to do it, I look forward to seeing your forms that you create. And um, be sure to check out my shop so you can get all of this pre-integrated already into the forms and landing pages. So that all you have to do is just pop your webhook in and you're all set to go. All right. Hope you learned a lot and that you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe and I'll look forward to uh, showing you some more fun things later on.